Don't even look at it. I don't, but I, don't, I mean, I really don't know because, like, honestly, like, um, I don't think Nick kind of knows what he wants or how he wants to go about doing it. Like, I don't think he knows anything about what he wants to do. Like, I think he's just, Nick Khan's in his own head. He's in his own way, to be honest with you. Like, he's probably his own way. You know, Khan coming in here like they revamped Subway menu. Right. With the new commercials. Wait, we don't have enough time? But I'm time. All right. Speaking of Tom Brady, goddamn. Hey, hey, all, right. all the great white hypes is out. Hey, our, uh, all of them. Shit, our pick is out too, bro. Well, Matthew Stafford is still in there. I mean, you know. This is probably because he do it. Is right he considered a great white hype, though? I mean, he was in purgatory in, in, in Detroit forever, so. I mean, but he, because he really had no help when Megatron left. And then they never, they never get, they never get him a line, ever. Ever. They never, ever get him a line. I mean, in terms of like, who the, uh, who the casual fans know? No, but Joe Burrow was the top. I think no one pick, wasn't he? Joe Since Bur- he quarterback? Yeah, yeah. I'm reading. Well, Joe Burrow, he's, 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 he's not like, he's not the level, obviously, of Tom Brady and Aaron Rodgers in terms of who people know, but in, in terms of that, this, that, you know, the great white hype thing, Depends what your connotation of that word is, mm-hmm. or that phrase. Because like I said he's the number one overall pick a few years ago. Uh, Cincinnati quarterback. I just know he's better than Baker Mayfield. That's all I really. Oh, okay. The way, the way I was utilizing that phrase, and I hope that doesn't offend anybody. But if it does, hey, it is what it is. It's how I take rest. Um, I'm just using- like you talking about like elite. Yeah, like the elite like, guys, like Tom Brady, the casual guys. Yeah, you know, yeah. yeah. That's what, I, that's what I thought you meant. Yeah, so in that aspect, no. Everybody's out. I mean, yeah, because AR-12 is out, which is stupid. Uh, I'm, mad, I'm mad at AR-12. We're going to have a little football talk, I guess, before we get into the bean, meat, meat and potatoes of this. I think AR threw that game, man. Hey, nobody can convince me otherwise. What do you mean? Nah. He threw that. You ain't see how Dak played against the 49ers? AR threw mm-hmm. that game. I don't think he's throwing no game because he's trying to submit. He's trying to submit his legacy though, because he had he won another Super Bowl. You guys talk about him being top five. We got the numbers alone. They already said he's top five, but you can, like that's without a doubt. Like some people might try to knock him because I don't knock people for not winning Super Bowls because there's too many, too many like too many chefs in the kitchen to knock somebody for like not winning championship. Like look at Dan Marino. Yeah. So. I don't I mean, really I just a, I care just about a, that. Uh, Tag me on Facebook about about that, talking about, oh, we only got two Super Bowls and we had two of the greatest uh, quarterbacks ever. And I'm like, yo, look, when y'all stop talking about 1985, then talk to me. Like, don't tag me and shit until we get away from 1985. Like, I was two, so I damn sure don't remember the Super Bowl shuffle at all. Like, mm-hmm. don't tag me in that. I <laughs> My dad broke it down for me why they were so good in the first place. He's like, you know what I mean? Like, like I, I don't remember that shit at all. Like, I, um, there's, there's no way for none, nobody in our age group to truly remember and adore that and give that the credit it deserves from '85. You would have I mean, to be at least 45 to be able to sit here and say, I, I remember that game. I mean, for for the football guys that's like stuck in that time period, that's like the guys who got to actually experience Jordan talking to these LeBron heads nowadays. Good example. That's that's true. That's true. But I don't think they do it as bad. Like, of course, it's not as bad because some success got, came at some points. Jordan got six championships. We talking about one Super Bowl. And well, it's, I, well it's, you know what I'm saying. The cream of the crop. You know what I'm saying. Like, it's you do about Super Bowls in our lifetime. Though, outside of really the Patriots, the 49ers, and the Cowboys, you really know. I mean, those are the three that kind of dominated our lifetime. In terms of Super Bowl is one. So which, I mean almost I said the Patriots, 49ers, and Cowboys out of our lifetime. Because the Cowboys won like three Super Bowls in the nineties. The Niners, uh they won well, I don't know how many Montana. I know Montana won one before Jerry Rice got drafted. So he had like four. He had four or five. He had four for sure. Because Steve Young won the last one they beat the Chargers, like for Super Bowl like twenty nine or some shit. Cause Jerry Rice had like five teams. Mm-hmm. Um, he killed the charge that game too. 
Yeah, I'm trying to think. Literally. Yeah, th- those are probably be the teams that have the most two goals in our lifetime. I mean, look at it this way. Only franchise I feel sorry for is the Bills. That's it. Yo. They lost four years in a row. Hey. To every team to every team in that division, dude. Hey, bro. Well, except for the Eagles, my fault. The hey, Redskins. Hey. Ain't no nobody, ain't nobody to blame but that pass defense at the end of the game. And honestly, and honestly, bro, Josh Allen played his ass off. There was nothing he could do, bro. It was out of his hands at that point. Which they Pat Mahomes had 13 seconds, bro. 13 seconds. And he just he just threw, like he read the defense before he got to the line and was like, all right, screen to Tyreek Hill, but with like a head start. It's Tyreek Hill. And then he just threw it to fucking uh Travis Kelsey, who's all elite, just to get us back on track, in terms of being a tight end. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, he's like, there's nothing you can do. One minute. Yo! Y'all well, trying man. to get hot take sports started, man. Hey, I, 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 I peep you, Joe. I've seen Good you. Good Good uh-huh. Uh-huh. <laughs> Welcome to the Hot Take Wrestling Podcast, episode seven or eight, five or six. It's four, actually. Um, My name is Joe Freeland, a.k.a. I'm Ron Sweden, a.k.a. I Believe in Moose. Uh, we're going to talk a little about wrestling for about an hour and get out your way, get some stuff going. I have two things that I want to say after we get started and then go from there. Uh, I got my brothers with me. Four horsemen again. Put your fours up, guys. Put your fours up. Put your fours up. Mine's just a Chris Benoit. So I'm, do the I'm, doing, I'm, I'm doing the arm with the, with the, with the, uh, the stuck joint. KG, you got to do the wrinkle Rick Flair. The, the Ric Ric squat. Four. Ric Ric Flair four. Hey, come on, KG. Come on, KG. I, I, grew, I grew up on West Side. I don't play no folks. Ooh, Dale. Chicago. Let's go to the Let's go to the You can't say that. Too sweet? Can we get it too sweet? <laughs> there we go. There we go. There we go. Get the too sweet going in. And, 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 and since he introduced himself first, uh, the connoisseur of all whiskeys, of, uh, of of all suede uh, slippers and embroidered robes of all kinds. West Side Kenny, the West Side Gun. What's up, man? How you doing, man? What's going on, gentlemen? Um, first of all, I, I hope we get uh, this thing settled with Will's background, because for a second, he looked like the hologram that Dean Ambrose fought in that three-on-one Hell in a Cell match. Even though it was really supposed to be one-on-one, you know, Gray White popped up. He's already fighting Seth Rollins. And then Tupac's hologram came out. <laughs> Damn it, Kenny. All right. Well, Kenny's going to be the fucking promo. Well, we can see that going down. Uh, oh. Uh, all right. And next to him, my brother. Got to introduce my brother, uh, the conqueror, uh, the advisor, if you will, of Hot Take Wrestling. Um, the calm one, I always put him in the promo as calm as ever because he'd be having some cool advice and shit. Ladies and gentlemen, uh, old man Logan, Logan the Machine. What's up, man? Greetings and salutations, people. Another episode of here. Welcome. Question for you. Do you want to be good or do you want to be great? I'm kind of glad you unbuttoned that top button. First, it was like, we just want to like Sunday school or something. I know what was going on. <laughs> <laughs> you gotta, you gotta try everything for the, you know, he hit that record button, man. You see how you want to present yourself to the world. You was out here looking like, uh, what was it? You remember when Devon, what was he? Deacon Devon or whatever? <laughs> Reverend oh, no, Devon. Uh, Reverend, yeah, because Batista well, was the I, Deacon. Hey, I, KG wanted to smoke tonight, okay? I, KG was, I, ain't say it was a, I ain't say it was a bad thing. KG wants all the smoke. <laughs> the timing. I ain't say it was bad. The timing. <laughs> K, KG said, I want all of the smoke. Um, I'd definitely rather be Dick and Batista than the animal. No, I wouldn't. That's <laughs> no, I wouldn't. Hold on a second. Hold on a second. I got to get one more in. And then I got to introduce my man, Will the Thrill, Ill Will, Mr. Jameson, King of the J-Mo, the man with the, the legendary beard and now the legendary locks. What's up, man? Say what's up to the people. First of all, I'd like to apologize for the freaky background happening that's going on. Uh, it's very fitting because um, I'm high. <laughs> you know, with that, uh, I, you know, I, I hope, you know, we're getting watched by WWE at the moment because that's going to be Mason's next game. going to come out with a blunt. Just, <laughs> oh, don't drug test me, baby. 
let's Randall, let's, come fuck with me. Let's just get this. Let's just get this over. I see what you did there. Let's just get this over with right now. If WWE, whatever the company that's be like, hey, we want we want you guys to exclusively do your podcast through our syndicate. I was like, well, y'all got a long ass rule, but we gonna probably end up doing it. But we ain't gonna change a lot of shit. We gonna say we gonna talk about love and love. I wouldn't mind getting power bomb through the table for something I said. I ain't gonna lie to you. I ain't gonna hold you. I, I, now, I, I, I mean, I, I'll take a three D. You know what I'm saying? I'll take one. I'll take an L. I'll take an L. That. Take a three D. I ain't taking seven straight weeks with someone to drop through a table though. Fuck that. <laughs> no, I'm not doing that. That I will not do. I'll pass on that. But I, you know what I'm saying? Like if, if I get to talk my shit, then I'm all good with that. Um, I know I told you I wanted to say a couple of things about uh something crazy about like um just wrestling in general. Honestly, if they open this forbidden door and we get Moose versus Roman Reigns. I want Moose to win. Am I wrong for that? Like, is that weird? Is that weird to want that? No, I don't no, say it's weird. I don't think it'll happen, though, but I can see why you want it. I mean, it would... I, I think it's a little weird. I, yeah, I want to I wanna hear the reason why you want Moose to win. Why well, would I'm, Moose be yeah, worth Before I say it? something, yeah, like, I want to hear why you pushing for Moose. Is it because of how he's pushing for it on social media or just literally, like, genuine backing of Moose? I, I think I genuinely back Moose because I've seen Moose at the bottom and seen him where he is. Like, I, like I watched the match with um, Moose, Matt Cardona, and I forget another buddy's name and I apologize, but it was a triple threat match and he was, he was phenomenal. He was great in that match. And he's not, Moose isn't like, Moose is, Moose by no means is like um, the next big thing or anything like that. But he's great to me. Like, he, he's on his way to greatness, I think, with his strides. Like, the promo he cut that long time ago when he first won the championship or whatever, like, it was his timing, his cadence, on his terms. And he really don't care who the champion is or whoever, because he's always called out Brock Lesnar because he wants Brock badly. He's always called out Bill Goldberg because they both played football or whatever. So, like, he played for some college. But I think he even played Roman Reigns at one point. He played Roman in college too. That's that was another part of it. Roman went to was it Georgia? He went Georgia, Georgia Tech. Tech. Georgia Tech. I don't. I'm not sure where Moose went. I think but I, I saw it on somebody's page the other day. I think it was Black Western Alliance that 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 showed recently. But I, saw I forgot it. what school it was. But he played offensive tackle. He played offensive tackle. He was he was really fucking good. But yeah. I I think I'm I'm appreciating the maturation of Moose a lot more. Than what I should, and I and 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 I'm appreciating a lot more things. For example, Syracuse. he went to Syracuse. Okay, for example, for example, yeah. I'm starting to think the best the best division in the women's wrestling is not in WWE anymore. No shit. You think after all the pieces they lost? Are you kidding me? They had they fired half of the division, but I and mean, then turned I'm everybody heel. <laughs> Uh, but I'm saying like, <laughs> I'm saying like, I'm saying like, not even like where they are now, like potential wise. And I don't think he, I don't, and I still think AW is close, to be honest with you. No, Impact has the best women's division outside of WWE. I'd say Impact, in, uh, in NWA, they kind of have to be um, kind of in the conversation because they, uh, they're on the rise, but they, they lost a lot of talent to AEW. Because bigger contracts, obviously, you know what I mean, and more, you know, everybody was gonna try to more go TV people. time, yeah. You know what yeah. I'm saying? But be prior to that, like when eight, when the emergence of AEW, when they very first hit, it was NWA right after Impact. Like Impact has been on WWE's heels for quite some time in terms of the women's division. I just feel mm-hmm. like damn, be out the big ass so fine. God damn, she fine. I mean, I, just, I feel like they go ahead, go ahead, bro. I was gonna say, I feel like they just. Ever had uh, Pequod's pizza? You know, heard of Pequod's? It's a deep dish. It's another. It's another famous deep dish, Chicago. Um, I just feel like that's what the women's division was in, in NXT. They just um, gutted the roster. Now it's like that frozen pizza, basically that barely the cheese barely covers it. You know, the cheese we the pizza we used to get back in the day, which is like none of the sauce. Oh damn. Oh damn! Oh, like the jewels, the jewels pizza. Mm-hmm. <laughs> you know what? It's borderline lunchables pizza at this point. Oh damn! 
That's what they did to the roster. Totally That's awesome. what they did to the roster. I, I, but I really feel like if I really, if I really just really think about the roster in totality with impact, Deanna Peraza, who was actually in NXT, who was actually very talented. Mickey James actually is super duper over there and she's awesome. But she's in like death matches. Remember Aiden English? He's over at Impact. And he's like the buffer for freaking Deanna Peraza. Mm -hmm. Jordan Grace is there. She's awesome. Um, I'm missing what? Okay. Chelsea Green is overrated. Uh, Kira Hogan was there, but she's in AEW now, right? Yeah. Chelsea Green she's is She's in over. NWA. She was in NWA now? Yeah. I saw her in NWA like a week ago on a, in a match in NWA. I think she's doing both, but she's definitely in NWA. Okay, I think they want definitely expansion. Both, yeah. mm -hmm. They want definitely expansion. And then I also I think uh, I also think that with um, I think with certain with certain things that like with what they have going, they they want certain things too. Like it's just certain things they like they they want. They certain things they do that is very exciting. You know what I'm saying? And I'm I'm really excited about it because it, it looks it looks like they have potential of being like one of the best women's roster. Period. You know what I'm saying? And it's weird. It's weird to say that because I really feel like WWE, like their women's roster was like untouchable at one point, but now it's just like, yo, like now, now, now I know I'm gonna get. I've I've seen Charlotte wrestling up to know that she's talented. I don't need to do that. Becky, same thing. Same thing with Sasha Banks. Same thing with Bailey. But like, who else besides Bianca Belair and? Uh, <laughs> Big mommy cool. Who else? I mean, uh, 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 I was trying to say uh. shit. Uh, <coughs> what's my girl name? Uh, uh, Nightmare. Rhea Ripley. Rhea Ripley. I mean, who knows I was, that? But like you know, like who else? They didn't really. They they dropped the ball with her though. They they now they got it right with with Bianca and they dropped the ball with Rhea. Like I I, I not saying I'm mad because you couldn't lose with either one of them. But how in the hell they dropped the ball with her like that is beyond me. But she should definitely be a big, bigger figure in who's there right now than she is. I agree, and she's gorgeous too. She really is gorgeous. I don't care. I, don't have to. I mean, and she likes black know. men. That part. Rhea, I'm no. just saying you got four to choose from if homeboy screws up. No, you, no, you got three. You got three. Oh know. yeah, I forgot. <laughs> well, technically, she's said, wait. Yeah, three. You got three. Um, yeah. <laughs> My girlfriend. Uh, okay, Dave Hollister. <laughs> he can shoot. Uh, <laughs> yeah. uh, okay, so now what far thought me? Uh, fa -fa. La -ta -ta. <laughs> um, <laughs> uh No, uh, honestly, um, I honestly, but I, I genuinely feel like just with the maturation of certain things with the women's roster, like now it's be. It's, I think. Shout out to Cody. It's becoming anarchy for wrestling now. Like wrestling fans that like really love like pure sport of wrestling. Like now you can go like anywhere to see greatness. Like WWE ain't no more. Like it's not gonna be the, the, the top of the creme de la creme no more. Like no bullshit. Fuck WWE on some 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 shit. To be honest with you, like it's not hitting no more. Like it's it's just not the place no more. Like if I want to see, I'm more excited about a PWG card now than I am about some of WWE's major pay per views. Is what it is, you know what I mean? But I'm not going to disagree with that because I feel like they've dropped the ball. Like I said, with almost every person that was over in NXT except for Seth and Charlotte, in terms of who was pushed to like the top. Biggie, you could argue to a degree that they were always kind of they never really, you know, what I mean, felt like he was being buried at any point. But I so I guess you can kind of say those three. Because Roman never really got that push on NXT. He got more so a push like on FCW. Um, FCW. Uh, Finn, they dropped the ball with him. Kevin Owens, Sami Zayn. Bailey had to make do. So maybe you could put her in there. But I'd like to drop the ball with her because um, she was legit. Probably like one of the more over baby faces ever down there. And she comes on the main roster. Do some weird... Bailey's This Is Your Life segment, which is probably one of the worst segments in the history of Raw. Mm -hmm. And, you know, it's it just, they gave her, they gave her 
crap, basically. Um, Kudos to her for making Doodle, like I said, so when they turned her. Because that wasn't supposed to work. I was like, they were just like, yeah, let's, we don't got nothing for you. Let's turn you heel. I feel like that saved her damn career. Basically, it did. And she saved herself, though, because I didn't think it was going to work at first. But, you know, with the women's thing, though, Joe, and I think this got to be pointed out, like, Triple H was a huge component of that. You know what I'm saying? And he's nowhere near the driver's seat at all anymore. So that's where you see the steady decline in the women's roster and just the injury. They don't even show as many women matches anymore. Like, I was just sitting here watching this Io Shirai match on NXT. Now, I'm not going to sit here and, 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 and take a crap on the girl she was wrestling because she did pretty decent. I think her name's Tiffany Stratton, if I'm not mistaken. But it just don't have the same type of pizzazz that it had when the dude was in the driver's seat. And, you know, that's why, you know, women's wrestling is thriving everywhere now uh, because a, a lot of that talent that he was compiling is gone now. So a little bit is going to NWA, a little bit is going to AEW, a little bit is over there in MLW, a little bit is, you know what I'm saying, in, in Impact. The rest are hitting the indie strong. And, you know, this stuff, the indies isn't the same indies it was in the 90s. You know what I mean? Where this stuff was just, you had to be there to see it. This stuff is televised now. If it isn't, you know, pay-per-view, it's, it's on YouTube. So their notoriety, people, you know, you get a, a um, Ember Moon, you know what I'm saying, for example, just throw her out of the mix. You get her to be on an indie show and it's televised. Like, that's going to draw eyeballs just because it's Ember Moon. You know, it's options out here now. And and I, I don't know if WWE just was, like, trying to keep competition away for so long that now that they really can't, they're just like, all right, whatever, we're going to offload a ton of this talent that we were just paying for just to keep away from competition. But yeah, man, you move dude away and you just see like everything he had his fingerprints on is it, going now. Literally, literally just nothing left of anything with Triple H's hand on it. And on top of that, it's sad, it's sad to see it that way too. Like for example, um, I say like I don't know if we'll ever get matches the way we got matches with like Sasha and Charlotte, which to me is still one of the coldest Hell in a Cell matches ever. Even though ba- Bailey and Sasha is right there, like it's it's right there. But I don't think we're gonna get matches like that anymore, or, or, or get that type of caliber match or magnitude anymore like that or whatever. But that man was that that man's a wrestling genius, bro. Like he really is a wrestling aficionado about just being able to do certain spots, certain moves. One more thing. Mustafa Ali need to hold his head. He need to hold his head. They not let him out. They not gonna let him out of his contract. He asked to be released on Twitter. They're not telling him out of his contract. They say he has years left over. Hey, he'll be released he by next month. He'll be released by next month. Nah, but they want to release him on his own accord. And because he asked for his release on Twitter, they're still holding him under contract. They're going to make him wait these years out. In the oh, world where they're firing they're anybody, anybody, they're holding him hostage for what? Exactly. They've been granting everybody else's release. Same thing, with, But that's the same thing with Finn, too. Vince McMahon, uh, rumor, rumor has it, Vince McMahon's extremely disappointed in Finn's, uh, Finn's run, too. So that's why he's losing clean to bumps. Two things on that. So I heard, let's start with Finn. I heard there was a rumor, at least on the internet, that Vince or whoever is doing creative, they're gonna now kind of use Finn in that Jeff Hardy role as a mid Carter. That's kind of like how you get people over. Um, so I, I don't know how you put Finn in that role particularly. Uh, it's a huge mishap. But as far as uh, uh, Mustafa Ali, um, I, I read also that they said that anybody that goes and asks for their release on social media, making it a, a you know, making a spectacle of it, I guess, they weren't gonna grant those. They was like, if you don't come to us directly and you do something like that, post it on social media or making, you know, private business public, then yeah, we're, we're not we're not letting you go. So oh, he's wow. the latest, you know, he's, he's, the, he's being made the example of right now. Which to me, mm-hmm. which to me is, Okay, which to me, honestly, is just another just way of Vince being Vince. Like, 
like Vince has a way of being very confident in his abilities to be able to do certain things. But when it comes down to him doing push to shove or whatever, he really don't do it. You know what I mean? Like he's like, I'm Vince, I'm at, I'm Vince McMahon, I'm at, you know, he does his thing. And then all of a sudden, but then when people are like, I want to, I want to make my exit. Oh no, you got a contract. Stone Cold had the same thing. Like Stone Cold was a pillar in it. And you're trying to move him as, I think in the first round too, of King of the Ring. It was supposed to be Stone Cold and Brock Lesnar. And Vince's idea was to have Brock Lesnar win clean over Stone Cold. No, they wanted Stone Cold to lose on some random episode of Raw. I don't even know if it was a King of part of the King of Rain tournament. I might have been part of it, the tournament. I can't remember for sure. So you might be right about that. I just thought it was a random episode, not even a it tournament. Was, it was definitely a, yeah, it was definitely a random episode, KG. Uh Stone Cold addressed that. He said it wasn't necessarily about losing. It just was he wasn't about to he he was talking this shit. Like, look, I'm Stone Cold Steve Austin. I'm not losing on no random episode of Monday Night Raw. Yeah, because his point was to actually make it seemed like basically they were trying to make Stone Cold like he wasn't important anymore. And Joe, as you just said, he was a filler. I think Stone Cold's point was like if they built it towards an actual pay per view, he would said he had no problem doing the job. Yeah, that makes but but that makes that makes sense. Like that makes sense if you put it like like let the man go out on a pay per view. Don't let him go out on no goddamn episode of Raw where motherfuckers can't um, like review that with everything else and Peacock app is shit it's shit I don't like it I don't fucking yeah. like it it always <laughs> I'm mad about it I just want to add that in there too well, actually, that's that's very random dude like yeah but, that, but not but that's a that's a not to just come off of just like just hating everything about WWE but I, I genuinely just like those portions of when you're moving on from star to star like for example, I'm pretty sure AEW is not going to ask Chris W. Lose on Dynamite as his last match. It'll probably be a pay per view, or it'll be a major buyout, or anything. Like if you want to lose that way, cool. But I think you should get. I think you should at least get an option for what they've done for you for your company, some type of gratitude. Like I'm not a fan of Tony Khan right now, either, just because of how he's been doing shit. But you know, no, oh, yep, I know what that's going. I was, I will say this though. So, um... Even though it was a random episode of SmackDown, it was a little different too, though, because you guys weren't established yet. The one time I will say both guys got over as singles guys, even though we already knew what Eddie Guerrero was capable of. That street fight with him and Edge on SmackDown during like the Ruthless Aggression era. If anybody's never seen that, try to find it on Peacock. I would recommend it. Uh, throwback match of the week or so, something, so to speak. That kind of made both guys establish as singles stars going forward in the Ruthless Aggression era. That was an amazing match. I wish that was an amazing match. And like, uh... yeah, and that wasn't like on a pay per view because like Edge was on the rise already, kind of. I think he was drawing that time he was shooting Kurt Angle because they had a series of matches too. Where I think it was like hair versus hair. And I want to say it was a brown that time, but so yeah, I would say that helped. But I mean, in a ra- it's not, ra- it's very rare that a random episode of TV is going to get somebody truly over. And like I said, it was a little bit different because those guys were not, I mean, no one's really on Stone Cold level, quote unquote, outside of like Rock and Foley during that time, in terms of importance to the casual and hardcore viewers. Mm-hmm. But it's still like, it's, it's hard to get somebody over on a random episode of TV is all I'm saying. Yeah, it is. It is. And it's hard to, it's, it's, it has to be consistent. It has to be something where something is very, very well placed, like a hook thing on AEW, we, we look forward to that every night on Rampage. You know what I'm saying? Like, motherfuckers look forward to see a hook walk out there with the um, action bronze of music or whatever. Got the hair like Gohan and shit, walking out here and everything else. And not paying attention to this competition or whatever, then walking out at the end of the ring like a warrior, Tom Hardy, and it's gonna flash right now. Mm-hmm. But yeah, um... I, but I think, you also... Go ahead. No, I, I, think, it's, I think it's really cool, bro. Just because, like, I don't think anybody's doing a gimmick like that. I don't think anybody's, like, doing a gimmick like that. Like, I don't, like it's just different. You know what I mean? So, I, I, go ahead, bro. I'm sorry. No, I was going to say one last thing about the Stone Cold thing, too. I, I remember Brock was also going off was over all those other people on pay on pay-per-views. Like, he went over Rock at SummerSlam and he shoot with Taker. Uh, I was like, no mercy. They heard their series of matches. Um... Cause no mercy, I think they were selling a cell. 
that first time was all match between each other. It's just, like I said, people were establishing Brock and helping them get over on pay-per-view for the most part. So it's like, you gotta understand where Stone Cold was coming from. He's like, you know, book him and all these matches on pay-per-view, you know, let's really help this dude out. Cause some random episode, they had made Brock look good, but then it made Stone Cold look less important. Right. You know? But, uh, well, that's the hook thing that's been one of the more enjoyable parts of Rampage. Uh, I will say this too if you get a chance, go ahead and watch, uh, see a Rampage, watch that Nick Jackson and Trent Beretta match. That was pretty good. Oh my uh, God. Yeah. That was so that good. Was awesome. That was actually I mean, fucking awesome. If Nick Jackson had more personality, I'd honestly would love to get a singles run. And maybe he doesn't want to. I don't know. If he's just content being in that, that tag team with his brother, but I'd love to see Nick Jackson get, or at least get more singles matches, even if he doesn't have a push, because everyone I've seen from him, at least in AEW, has been fire. They won against Ray Phoenix, like, was it two years ago on Dynamite? Yeah. yeah. Had to be two. No, more than two, because up two years ago, was the pandemic. So maybe, maybe even late 2019. It could have been 2020, though, because it could have been before everything shut down. I don't know. And then that match against Brian Danielson on Rampage was fired. Dude. Yeah, bro. Like, by the way, welcome back, uh, John Moxley. I uh, welcome back. Um, but yeah, man, it was. It's he's so awesome. Like they're all been awesome. But like, but like they've been doing that for a while. You know what I'm saying? And I and I like Trent, man. And Trent's okay. You know what I'm saying? Like he's he's really good. You know, he's cool, I guess. You know, <laughs> but like. Um, Nick Jackson is very talented. That was an amazing match. But like the stuff they have going on, everything is, everything is popping. Like everything pops on AEW. Everything. Yeah. Is, they still do storylines like in, indie wrestling, which is stupid. Um, Jay Lethal deserves better, but you know it is what it is. It is what it is. So, okay. Oh, and uh, I know Tim has brought up multiple times. He felt like you know. I think everybody still sees it. And Jr. Even pointed out, you know, Jay is still kind of green. Uh, but that match was against Anna Jay wasn't bad. It wasn't like oh mind blowing. Go ahead and go out of your way to watch it, but it was it was solid. It was solid. If, if you caught it, like you know what I mean. But you said about a lot of matches. And it's not to make it sound like I'm crapping on the women's wrestlers because there's plenty of times when I'm like oh you, you, you know you go ahead and cut it, go ahead. But like don't necessarily <laughs> you know what I mean. If you're already watching it, so I will say I'm trying to think would be like the last. Like I said, I would say go out your wife way to watch that match. But going back to, and this is when I want to see what, what their matches culminate to, because I would say go back and watch out of your way and watch most of those Serena Deeb and Carl Rashida matches. Woo! So I'm trying to see what that's how that's going to end. I'm surprised they didn't try to end with them having a lights out match. Why they're going to do it with Cole and Orange Cassidy. Serena Deeb out here giving you the full on how to be a heel by She is teaching you how to be a heel. That's yeah, another cool. one they just dropped the ball with, but let's not crap over WWE all the time tonight. All the time. I'm gonna, uh, I'm gonna, she, she I'm just, gonna actually, she, just, um, she just posted the anniversary of uh, CM Punk giving her that buzz cut. And CM Punk went around, <laughs> yeah, did you go on around Twitter last night or a couple days ago about WWE? I think it was like last night, time I wrestled this court. Yeah, <laughs> that guy, he's funny. He's gonna get Mark going now. Mm-hmm. Mark. Mark going, Good man. old Mark. Good old Mark. Mark comes back for one more match. Give me that finger. And shit. You pay attention. Look here. We well, he do this. Goddamn. That fucked up finger. That nigga finger is fucked. Mark fingers is just like this because of them gloves. Yep, yeah, it's them gloves. Them shits. Them shits. Nigga can't do shit with them. They just permanently like this from holding that, that, that can. What y'all going to do if, if he show up at the Rumble? Nothing. Cancel my subscription. It's me, Mark. <laughs> <laughs> Nothing. Because it, it's going to be. What? 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 You're going to give us. What are you going to give us? Cody as a fucking rumble? Oh. Fuck out of here. I don't care. I don't well, who would, <laughs> no, wait. Serious question. Let's let's make a question at it. Who would you want to see Undertaker face at this coming WrestleMania? If he came back. If he came back. This year? In front of a crowd? That's just. Now, it has to be somebody on the current roster. Not anybody they let go of. Not any. Not any forbidden door crap. Like, oh, you know what? Yeah, let's do forbidden door. We can add that because you could finally probably get 
Taker versus Sting if he did come back and call somebody out. But they might have to be a cinematography match at this point because oh. both of them have to be carried. Yeah, I would say they both they both got to be carried. They're both going to Sting. Sting, Sting and Darby Allen. It's over, son. Sting and Darby <laughs> Allen versus Taker and who? So they could be carried, as y'all put it. I mean, I'm not saying Taker can't have a singles match with anybody. Taker it's just... Here. There you go. That race itself. I, I don't I know. like I mean NXT's fan sure but now they watered him down again you got him fall you got him falling off you got him looking like an idiot he's so falling the off top, the broken deep. top so, broken top ropes and stuff that, that's what what's going on man you get regular fan you wouldn't get the demon demon well, the rain's oh, killed the well, demon. well mm-hmm. ain't no ain't nobody really just okay so I'll give you one you said forbidden door okay mouth high black that, hey I like that if it's a forbidden door, if it's someone that in WWE, um, only if Drew turned back heel to be in the sky of cycle back. That's that's really the only other person I could see where it's like they could carry the match and they're big enough to pull off some stuff against him where it's like, okay, it'll be entertaining. Because I'm gonna be honest, remember when uh, Roman tried to <laughs> tombstone? Yeah, nah, nah. <laughs> yeah, like he was struggling. He was so ready. Let me be let me let me be very frank with everybody about that whole like match. That match could have been good if it was prepped properly. Like if it was set up properly in a yeah. proper manner where we already hated Roman Reigns, you you could have made that a really good fucking match if you would have promoted it right. But they did all these other promos for everything else and all types of other shit that didn't make sense. But if Roman was going to be the man, all really it writes itself. Romo, uh, Roman takes out Taker over the rope. Every week you have Taker give like semblances of like him coming back to be Roman Jacks, like small stuff. Roman walks in. That was gonna be my answer. Right, Roman. Roman would be Roman be in the locker room. Purple smoke fills, and you just hear like flashes of lightning or whatever. He would lose a match week after week after week, and it would like like criminal. He would like be like like freaking out the whole time about everything else, and then all of a sudden Taker comes back like a week before WrestleMania, and boom. Choke slams Roman and then points to points to the WrestleMania sign. Now we're getting Roman versus uh Undertaker. But instead they did this two week thing that made no sense whatsoever. And it was out of nowhere and it was dry and it was really, really not well done. Probably brewed done by Bruce Pritchard, because he's a punk. And you know I don't even know if he was employed by that at the time. This was twenty seventeen. He, he might have been. Yeah, he might have been. I think he had bounced by then. I think he was doing that podcast. I'm not even know he still does. He was doing his podcast. He was in the podcast. He was in the podcast time, but it was on the network. That's how I know. Maybe he... I don't know. You, you might be right. I just I thought he was gone five years ago because yeah. they, they, they doesn't seem like. It, but that was five years ago. That was five years ago. That's what I'm saying. Like with Bruce. Like, wait, but wait, wait, wait. Before we go, I mean, like, did y'all pick somebody? Like Kenny pick somebody. I pick somebody. Will yeah, because to me, all the other people uh, I could think of. Boy, well, I'll back to what I was going to say. That's cool. Uh, well, I was actually really going to go hard about uh, Roman Reigns as the Tribal Chief against the returning Undertaker to try to get his one back. And still being his last match, I could see WWE kind of pushing it on some Roman and God mode versus the devil. And they'll push the fuck out of that, you know, because they like to really put like themes on matches until we get to the match. And then the stipulation to be something like like his last match being a beta live match or something at WrestleMania. Like and then that be on the second real last match. Roman put him in the guillotine, team, put him in the hole. That's I'd actually like to see that because that might go really fast. But I really don't want to see Untaker come back and wrestle. But if we talk about scenario wise, I mean really current roster wise, who else besides um Nah, Seth will paralyze him. Um, yeah, nah, no, no Seth. Yeah, no. Nah, um, he, Bobby Lashley, hey, way y'all. too. Fuck I mean, y'all. it's just the truth, man. Let's have one bad match with Sting and Weezy. <laughs> he shouldn't fight the fight over 60 no more. <gasps> nah, yeah. Seth had a, Seth, I know it's going to make me sound like a hater, but I'm, Seth had some times where he was going through it. Well, I know accidents happen, but he broke Cena's nose. 
Yeah, Seth, Step, he Seth separated Finn Balor. Going on for a minute. He separated Finn Balor's shoulder and he had to drop him towards the championship. Come on, man. Sting. That's and this is all over like a two year span. It was something else he did. Didn't he do something to Dolph? Yeah, Becky Did pregnant. That killed her push. That don't count. <laughs> oh, that doesn't count. I'm oh, sorry. <laughs> that does not right, count. Me, what, what about a forbidden me, door? What about a forbidden door pick? Uh, that. So, I feel like, no offense to moves, if the forbidden door was open more, not necessarily on a national Playing with NWA, Ring of Honor, AEW, Impact, those those organizations, they really opened up to even go so far as to go into like New Japan Pro Wrestling. In my opinion, it's not that many people, the way they push Roman and the level that he's on, it's not that many people that's on his level worldwide. And most to me ain't there yet. So it really would be like oh, they're forcing it because he's saying he won't it. I feel like you give me Roman versus Okada and we talking business. Ooh. Ooh. You said Okada? Yes, I did. That's like Roman. That's that yo. Yo, that's literally like that's like John Cena versus uh Kenny Omega. Yeah. But like John Cena, like in like rare, awesome form, like where he's really, really at his best. That's that's good. That was fucking good, my brother. That was good. Shit, that was good. Yeah, because for me, the only thing I'll go back real quick and say is like most of those people, that's the thing that could have great matches with Taker. They don't have enough. Well, at least WWE doesn't let them show enough of a personality to make the feud intriguing. Mm-hmm. So I want like, Gunther, Gunther come and chop Taker and turn him into dust or something. Wait, time out about that Gunther thing. I want to say one thing. They made him change his name to Gunther. Then they realized that the name they were going to give him was from an old Nazi yeah. soldier. Yeah, Nazi. we. I, mm-hmm. And they canceled the, the, the trademark the next yeah. day. Canceled the trademark altogether, which further shows that WWE ain't shit in the race. Go ahead. <laughs> go ahead. Go ahead. Gunther Stark. Gunther Stark. Gunther Stark. Come on, bro. That just writes itself. Come on, bro. That's a terrible idea. Come on. I, somebody had to be in that room and be like, hey, bro, I don't know about y'all, but that feels very German and very racist. Like, <laughs> just, just, come on. What bro. makes it even more effed up is Walter's Austrian. He's not even German. And said, hey, hey, yeah, yeah. Yeah, let's go. He's German. Right. Right. Well, I suppose I suppose God rest his soul. Yokozuna could be Jap- Japanese. And right by, Walt- right by Gunther is being German. <laughs> I guess so. But the thing about it is, was there anything with Walter's gimmick? No. Why the fuck could we change his name to Gunther? Because it's to get away from anything. Look, <laughs> Vince is Thanos and he snapped his fingers and everything Triple H touches. Disappear. Oh, well, then he needs it. Well, then I mean, it. yeah. When, 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 when Pete okay. Dunn becomes Dunn the Bruiser weight. Yeah, I'm out. It's, 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 it's Marvel all over. It's just the real Marvel. It's a muscle. WWE Universe. <laughs> <laughs> Champa. Like, let's just, Champa. Psycho Killer. Champa. Psycho Killer Champa. They don't call him a different name. Like, what did Cody say? What did Cody say in one of his promos? <laughs> Gunther McGillicuddy. Gunther McGillicuddy. Like, <laughs> because that's the type of name they be coming up with. These names are stupid. These names don't make sense. No, don't make sense. Malachi, Malachi, like, like, okay, Alistair Black, he's just like, you know what? I can't use Alistair, so I'll just change it to Malachi. Malachi Black. Jay Lethal, stay with Jay Lethal. The Young Bucks, stay with Young Bucks. John Moxley is a good name. Jonathan Good is his name, so he put Moxley at the end of it. John well, He was already Moxley before he went to West Coast, though, anyway. Right. Right, but it just doesn't make any sense to just have, like, stupid-ass names. Tyler Black is all elite. <laughs> 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 
<laughs> Tyler Black. Bruh. Oh, okay. I'm sorry. I didn't give you one. Um, in roster, I would want to see Bobby Lashley versus Undertaker. I just want to Bobby? Say yeah, here we go. I can see it. I mean, if he could carry Goldberg to a... See, or, Bobby, Bobby's so quick, man. Like, he spear Undertaker. That's a tragedy. Um, but I but I think I don't think Undertaker with Tombstone. I think he would use his last ride, and that that's good enough. Like that's you know what I'm saying. But you and let Bobby I'm, win, and it could be an ongoing feud between Bobby and Brock. Right. Then Brock could say, "Hey, I beat Undertaker first. Right. That would have made something different. That made different. If we're gonna get an extended feud between them, because that at least that's what I think we're gonna get from them. I, I'm not 100 percent sure, but but that would like to that writes itself though. Like and Bobby and Bobby. Writes would, itself. But and Bobby Bobby's not a Bobby's not a not a guy who's you know who struggles in the ring with lifting people up and you know he's pretty strong pretty and he's a smart guy he knows that this <laughs> not gonna work. Wait, wait, did y'all? This is super random with the topics. Did you see? Because I didn't I haven't watched. I'm gonna be honest with you. I think the last full length WWE event I watched was War Games. Um. So yeah. I but I heard when Vince had that golden egg thing. <laughs> Y'all heard what Roman said to him? Because Vince was like, his $100 million egg is missing. This and Roman was, Roma was like, that's funny. That's how much money it's probably going to cost you for my next contract. <laughs> <laughs> and they said, like, Vince had this dumbfounded look on his face. I'm like, he probably... He's serious. They're yeah, like, it, it probably he probably went script. on... Yeah, you know I was in a fight with even on the script. I'm like, see this? You give up having no hanging around ball here when too long. Hey, Joe Annoy is Joe Annoy is all elite. <laughs> Joe, Joe Annoy is all elite. On that ass. Talk about the, the the belt collector. Imagine Joe Annoy doing that. That'd be awesome. Are we butchering his name? Isn't it like Anawahe or something? Anawahe? Yeah. yeah. Kenny, yeah. Kenny with, the proper, with the proper come through. You know what I'm saying? Thank you, bro. Kenny, <laughs> say it one more time for the people, Kenny. I believe it's Anawahe. I'm in Hawaii. Joe on Hawaii. Joe in Hawaii. I'm in Hawaii. I'm in Hawaii. I'm in Hawaii. I learned how to talk like that when I oh. did some, some more. Oh, yeah. One other random switch of topics last week. I'm like, see, this is why this stuff is just golden. I'm glad they haven't changed his personality. And Chad Gable was like, do you even know what the definition of a rematch is? And then Matt Riddle talked about, like, life up a blunt. <laughs> He's like, a rematch is like when you have... <laughs> I was like, what is wrong with this dude? Uh, the last, the last night he was talking about, they asked him to spell uh, calibration. He was like, "Oh, so like when you have a scale in your one hand." Yo, I love you, Matt Riddle. Yeah, I love Matt. Too early to count Matt as a successful call up. Well. No. He didn't get it super pushed super hard down there, so I would say he's in a good spot. He's still underrated because he probably should have had a WWE championship match right by now. I'm not going to say he should have won a championship by now, but I'll go one step further. That's something I'm going to ask y'all. I'll say, like, who's a, like a dark horse pick and like who's an obvious pick? He's my dark horse pick to win the Rumble on Saturday. Mm -hmm. um, Riddle? Yeah, that's my a dark horse pick. I'm not an actual pick to win it. I try not to feed into the rumors, so I won't tell y'all the rumor until y'all make a pick in terms of who I heard is supposed to win, who's like the favorite. Okay. But um, so I'm not even gonna pick that person who I heard was because I don't necessarily think it makes sense anyway. Is it Drew? I'll pick. No, it's not. No, he's uh, saying tell us after we all pick. So that's that's. Um, but that being said, I made this like another dark horse pick, but I'm gonna go for it. Screw it, because you ain't got to push in a while. I'm picking AJ Styles. Up. I get out of my head, man. Shit, I was going to do the same. Now, shit. wait. Who do you have AJ going against? Mm. If he wins. Mm. Yeah, that's a good question. Because that was going <sighs> to be my pick. I was thinking about that no bullshit earlier today. Yeah. And I was thinking, who do you got lined up for Roman after this? You really don't have anybody else lined up for Roman. You really don't. It's been about six years since they feuded. You can have him go back to SmackDown. Now, granted, now, I, oh. I don't know if it's like, you know, that's all been resolved with him and Paul Heyman because he does like Paul Heyman got his boys fired. That's her coming. Yeah, so. Yeah. 
Yeah, they'll, they'll go. They'll be my picks. But that real dark horse. AJ's the guy I'm picking to win it. Mm. All right. Now, well, hopefully, I'm, he doesn't go out early. Yeah, I'm. I'm right oh, and a shocker pick. appearance too. One. That's that's not what I had. Uh, me, like I said, I, I'm picking. Really, <laughs> yeah, this is a highly unlikely. MJF's gonna be on the rumble. <laughs> 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 what if he was though? Like, what if he showed up? He was just like, uh, we can do one for the, one for the women as well. Since we want to kind of like, since we're in a lighter mood tonight, you know, because we we start off burying the company, we try to look to the positive. Uh, Dark horse pick. I'll pick for the women to win the rumble. Um, I'll pick. Uh, see, this is difficult because we got two hill champions. That doesn't mean you can't do a title change in between. But a dark horse pick, and she, well, they can always flip her flip a, to a baby face. I'm, dark horse uh, Dakota Kai, I'll pick as a dark horse pick. Um, actual winner, I'll pick. Then uh, we're going to get a, I think we're getting a repeat. I think I'm going to pick, you know what? No, screw that. I'll pick Asuka. No, 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 wait, wait, wait. Sorry, sorry. Okay, it, final, 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 <laughs> final, final one. I'll final I'm, picking, I'm Ronda Rousey. Damn it, Kenny, stop God picking damn, the Kenny, that's, that's, that's Okay, that's my actual answer, yeah. <laughs> so Dark, Dark Horse, Dakota Kai, uh, actual winner, Ronda Rousey. All right. Hmm. Okay, so I pick AJ as my winner for the men. I'm going to start there, and I'm going to have him going after Rome. Roman and ran through everybody. I think if you do take the title off of Roman, we got AJ. He's basically turning back face. You know, he lost almost on Raw clean. He got the little in-between feud right now with homeboy from uh, NXT. What's his name? Uh, Grayson Ray, Waller. Grayson Waller. You know, that's just, you know, that's just a placeholder kind of thing. And it's about time, man. He hasn't touched a uh, mid-card, like a, a singles title in quite some time. So I think AJ would be a safe bet for Saturday in terms of the men rumble. A dark horse pick. Mm, I would love to see Shinsuke, Shinsuke win again and actually get pushed this time. He's been in, he's been IC champ for I don't know how long. And he, you see him every now and again on, on SmackDown. He has a hand injury. Ah, well, there's that. So let me change him real quick then since he has a hand injury. Well, he might still be in the Rumble, but I'm saying that might be why, why we've seen him compete less is all I'm saying. Oh, okay. Yeah. All right, well, I'll stick with him as a dark coach pick for the men then. But those would be my two men picks for the Rumble. Women, I'm going to go Ronda Rousey. We've heard the rumblings. I think it was even confirmed now. She's supposed to be a part of the Rumble. Everybody has wanted her versus Becky. And I think it's time for that now. Um... If she doesn't win, my dark horse pick will be Big Mommy Cool, and she'll be going after Charlotte. So that's what I would go for the women. And for shits and giggles, just a random entrant. Mm. I'm going to let Joe pick Big Moose because I already know he already said it all night. <laughs> uh, yeah. I'm going to pick, I'm going to pick, uh, I just I don't see Tony giving up none of his pillars. Now I don't see none of them guys being a part of that. So uh let's see, Impact probably be more willing to put some of their main guys. So I'll say Christian. Mm. Even though he's a he's a you know former WWE guy. Christian. But he was a big, big you know, he was East, uh impact champion for a, a, a little spell there. He was signed to AEW, but he was on impact, appearing on impact. I think he still doing the cross thing over there. I don't know. Uh, I'm not sure. I haven't paid attention to Impact. Uh, I think, I know he hasn't really wrestled much on AEW because he's been trying to get Jurassic Express over, but. Yeah. But if not Christian, then maybe uh, let me get a straight, straight up Impact guy. I'll be Josh Alexander. That would be bad. Um, that would be bad. Uh, 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 For uh, the men, Dark Horse, Chad Gable. Uh, um, Interesting pick. Yeah, uh, yeah. So I'm going weird tonight. Um, who I think is going to win out outright? AJ Styles. 
just makes perfect sense. Right to sell. AJ Styles is a draw. Um, for the women, Dark Horse is... Dark Horse is Shotzi. Hmm. Um, who's going to win? Big Money Cool. She's going to win. Um, if I had to have a bidding door open, uh, it'd either be Moose or Kota Ibushi. And that's also how I want to wrestle on the is Kota Ibushi. Okay. Real quick, uh, Christian's last WWE match was last year's Royal Rumble. Um, my potential pick for the men for the Royal Rumble, I'm kind of stuck between either Biggie or Drew McIntyre. And that's just generally trying to think like, what would WWE do? I always kind of go that direction. It, it, I could see them trying to make sense of either one of them winning with people that's wrestling in the championship matches now, which brings me to my Dark Horse pick. I had a feeling Brock Lesnar is going to get in this Rumble and win. <laughs> Like, seriously, I, like, if there was a year for Brock to win, this would be a year that Brock would win. And I got a feeling they're going to pull it somehow. I just got, I just, like, if y'all hear his music, remember, I remember, I said this shit. Like, I got so, a feeling Brock is going to get in the Rumble somehow. So retain and get in the Rumble or lose and, and get in the Rumble? It's possible. Charlotte trying to get in the Rumble with the title. Uh, they go Charlotte trying to shoehorn herself into that, trying to do a three way again. We'll see. We'll see. Brock did that two years ago, though. Anyway, he 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 entered as champion. Granted, he was a heel at the time. I just I know one person who definitely don't want to see win the Rumble. Don't say it. Don't you say it. Don't. I don't even gotta say it. If if he hears you say it, he's going to think about doing it, and he might do it. So don't say it. Oh, modern day Maharaja. I'd rather see him win the Rumble than that guy I'm thinking of. Don't say it then. That that because that means if huh? Huh? They thought they was out there fighting amongst themselves when we was at Backlash because the Maharaja won against Randy Orton. What do you think they're gonna do at the Rumble? Don't say it. That's all I'm asking you guys. Not to them say. rednecks, hey, Will, them rednecks was out there. <laughs> they was ready to fight us at the parking lot, boy. Like, I, I, don't, I don't give a damn. Like, what? We were literally, woo, woo. And that was all over there, and all of a sudden, two rednecks fighting in the parking lot. Old girl couldn't even break it up. She's like, guys, stop. <laughs> stop. Please, stop. Please stop. Yeah, no, because, uh, well, I will say this though, if if WWE was really smart and the forbidden door was truly open, right? You know who they pick for Seth to wrestle at WrestleMania 38? He has the same first name as somebody on this podcast. Will. Nope. No spray. No, <laughs> no, no, no. You, you no. don't want to see him in Seth? No, I don't want to see him in Seth. I don't want to see him in Seth because Will Ospreay is just so fucking. He's so fucking gifted, and even now he's starting to realize he's gifted, and now he's strong as shit too. Now, ah, oh, ah, oh, I challenge you to go watch a good Will Ospreay match and be like, this nigga's the man. Shit, excuse my language. I'm sorry, excuse my language. But yeah, but, I just had a horrible thought. And it's really bad. Hmm. I'm listening. So you know how there was this match they had planned at some point, and then something happened, and then Braun Strowman had to replace a certain somebody, and they really wanted that match at some point. And since The Rock oh. might not show up for WrestleMania, these motherfuckers might. Oh my God! I feel some mail. What the Rock? No. No, see, no, I know what he's talking. No, I know what he's talking about. He's talking about what we were supposed to get at WrestleMania 36. Yeah, nah, if they do that, I told, okay, I'll, I'll cancel my subscription for real. I, I, I was joking. I was joking. 
I was joking I'm, about Taker, but I I'm I'm sure. walking to to Connecticut. They do that. It's gonna be a problem. Fight. No, no, no. Huge fight. Yeah. yeah, no. I'm not I'm down taking for that, that at damn all. shovel with me. The golden shovel, man. Taking it with you. Yeah. The golden I, pissed on shovel. I'm gonna take it oh, with that's me. That's what I wanted to say earlier. I was gonna say Moose wow. is the black Batista. That's what he is. Black Tista. Just like He's the black Omar says, the, is the black is the black great great Kali. Hell yeah. Who? Oh, almost. Omar says the black great Kali, the great black Lee. That's him. Y'all are Think about it. Big Moose is the black Dave Batista. No, bro, go watch him wrestle. It's not the same. Yes, it he is. He walks for miles inside yeah. the hood of Dave. Yes, it is. You think of old Big Dave. Think of Dave circa his 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 push. Don't no, don't don't make Joe this. break don't make Joe I, break down. Jesus Moose said, you know he <laughs> yeah, I know you gotta same to him. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> break down the move oh. set, Joe. It is he not got the, he got the show he got the shoulder he got the shoulder tackle. That's all I mean the uh shoulders in the corner. <laughs> he had the spine bust. He don't want to admit it. Look at that thing. He had over the there. he had the power bomb. But he still he didn't have any moves. Okay, here we go. Since you want to break down the moves and do this. As KG said, he had that show attack in the corner. He had that weak ass spear. He had the fucking uh weak uh, spine buster. Spine, the weak ass spine buster. Okay. Oh, he does do all of those. Moose does all of those. Let's continue. First off, first, whoa! Whoa. Moose does all of those. Continue. He does them way better. No, but he does them. Keep going, though. Please them. keep going. Please no, keep but going. please Moose probably. I hate Moose this. Probably, this is what I hate. Moose. This is what I hate. Wait, but Moose hit the probably, impact going to the ground clothesline. Keep going. This, 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 this is what I hate. But, what I hate. But here's the thing: the Batista probably only had two great singles matches this whole run, and that uh, was WrestleMania 23 against Taker. Okay. And that, that Hell in a Cell against Triple H in like 2000, like right after WrestleMania 21. You said the one they, only two great singles matches for me. He got at least five, bro. You you being petty? Man. Oh, he got he got more than two. I get Dave. Okay, oh, what's, what's great. The, I'm talking about five. like that, like and Brandy and Brandy. Hey, okay, your head. all right, fine. Said four, Three. You got to say one of the matches with Randy, and you got to yeah. say one with Cena. I mean, you have to. Yeah, right. Yeah, when he was a heel. Okay, all right. Had a good match right now, like the this. story, the stories are good. Were the match quality great though? This, this is how I break it down. This is how I break it down. Great matches to so me. No, you're not off the hook yet, buddy. Moves continue. <laughs> for moves of Batista. You, you can take that. Batista. Okay. Set. All right. Okay. Okay. This is how I break it down. This is how I break it down. Since you want to break it down, this is how I break it down. That's exactly how I break it down. Okay. Oh, yeah. You saw Batista do it first. Fine. Granted. You saw Batista do it first. How many 6'6, 275 pound guys are you know that do it moves outside of a spine buster, clothesline, spear, um, shoulder tackle, uh, and a power bomb? How many? How many? How many guys you know doing outside of those moves? Because everybody that's 6'8 or 275 or above does those moves. You know what makes them different? Doing them with pizzazz. For example, tell me that the spirit bomb is not exactly like the last ride. Explain it to me how it's not. Explain it to me how it's not. You want it to be like the last Explain ride. to me how it's not. It's, it's not. Is the Batista bomb Circa the early two, th what was it? With, when was WrestleMania 23, Kenny? Early, it was early 2004. 2000, 2007. Seven, yeah, circa, I'm, I'm 2000, circa 2007, Batista bomb. You're going to quit with the shenanigans. It's okay? not the same thing. The spirit bomb, the spirit bomb different because Keith Lee gets, he throws you up a little bit higher and he comes down and actually like lands on the mat with the, with the power one to give it more authority. Taker oh. just kind of. Taker does that when he falls with a fat so person. So it's a sit down <laughs> last ride is what you're saying. Taker loses to yeah. the motherfuckers in the height. Like he had so to. And he, go, and he lean and then go, ugh. So it's a yeah. sit That's down like last me, ride is what you're I saying. I 30 minutes with you yeah. in that thing, bro. I cannot hold you. So what you're me. saying to me right now is that the spirit bomb is a sit down last ride, which means it's the you're exact same. the last ride to it. It's just, a, it's, a, it's a modified power bomb, bro. Like. You stop because, making it because it's not the same, bro. Because if we if we do right, it like the that, the last ride is a modified power bomb, but that's more like a, a I would say a modified choke slam in a sense. Stop that, Tim. Stop, bro. Because you try to piss me off. Look, that's not remotely the same choke slam. Don't do that. Don't do that. You are better than that. 
Stop that shit right now. Cut that shit out. That is not a choke slam. The way you just explain, stop that. No, cut the shit out. You try to take me. Look, take him ready. He didn't see. I'm gonna tell you how the how the last rash started. He be ready. He be grabbing him like this, right? Setting him up for power bomb. And if you ain't never noticed that right hand be like right there, like he be ready to try to turn into choke slam. But now he can't. So it's like, bad. I gotta drop. Him. Gotta drop. Him. Tim, shut up. Shut up, right now. Shut up. Shut up. It's not right. It's not close to right. Tim. You know it's not right. Cut out. Are oh, you had to? That's, that's <laughs> not. I have like, brother. That, that is not. First off, okay, wait. The wait no. Let me get this off. Me get Has this he off. not proved my point though with these damn moves? Like, eh, tell me if I'm wrong here. You're wrong. Moves Nation wrong. is Dave Batista all over again. Like, no. I don't, I, okay. he's gotten progressively better. Like, Moose wasn't even this good. We wouldn't even be having this conversation two years, two years ago. ago. Listen to me right Here's, now. Listen to me. Listen to me right now. Listen to me. He was heavier. He was nowhere near as good as he is in the ring now. Listen to me right now. Listen to me clearly as I say this. You are comparing David Batista to Moose right now and where he is. And that is unfair. I'm comparing Moose to Dave Batista. Okay, well, if you're comparing Moose David to Batista is a legend, whether y'all want to admit it or not. They, by association. He is a legend by association. About what he did in the ring himself. He's Dave like, Batista at some point was hotter than Cena. He can say I that. He it's, it's it's a was by association. Stop the cap, bro. Stop the cap, bro. That's the cap, bro. Okay. No cap. That brother's he making. Cabin. He's he making great cabin. value cabin. rock money. Okay. Hey, Jesus. He was a one. He was a one. He was a one to be answer to Brock Lesnar. They called him the animal because the beast left. Oh my God, look how simple that is. The quiet one knows all. Cause that's the exact answer that it is. What is what is a moose? That is, that is well yeah, but that's a moose not an animal. Moose is moose for big people. Big people over six six, two seven five. Let me talk to this side of it. And, 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 and triple and triple and triple. Who ever ego, wanted to be a moose? And what, triple what ego, moose, bro? And triple ego didn't want to put Brock Lesnar over, but he put over his the guy that was groomed, that he groomed. Let me break it down for you like this. Let me break this down for you like this. And you, better, you better make a clip of this, because this is this is money, okay? okay? This this right now is my exact reasoning as why I say Dave Batista is a legend by association. Randy Orton, even after Evolution, was memorable because he was a great wrestler. He was solid on the mic and had five star plus matches, and he had them with a bit of everybody. Dave Batista is a legend by association because his matches with five stars are with legends, okay? If you want me to be honest with you, the match with Christian at SummerSlam and the match at Money in the Bank with Christian, those both matches are five-star matches for Randy Orton. And you and you can't- And over the limit. And over the limit. That was, can't, with that, over the limit was good too. And you can't, and you can't say otherwise. If you, if you put Dave Batista against somebody who maybe isn't, who maybe isn't at that legend status, not a Cena, not a Taker, not a Triple H, not a Sean, not a Orton. He gonna get blown up. Exactly. He is, he is he a legend by association. Did he get blown up against Ray Mysterio? Those aren't even memorable, bro. Like those aren't memorable. That's, me. That's what I'm saying. I guess it's all a matter of subjectivity no, or because eh, I don't think they're memorable. They're not, bro, Dave Batista is not, okay, bro, I'm sorry. His I'm sorry. The feud itself was. The, the, the feud itself the, was the the whole you're supposed to be my friend the the, the heel turn all that was memorable that, that the was actual awesome. match that was awesome yeah. you know people remember Dave Batista for quitting in the middle of the ring you're forgetting how old Dave Batista is that's what but that doesn't we still remember what art when Randy Orton argued you're, you're, you're trying to bring you making an argument about Randall Keith Orton whose wrestling is in his fucking blood if there's any uh, anybody that can literally personify that saying it's randy orton okay all right then i'll put it to you like this thing i'll put it to you like this thing dave batista is a legend by association because you cannot give me a memorable match where he wrestled somebody who was a good wrestler and it was a memorable match for you you can only give me matches with legends that's it negative that's it John Cena, John, and if you want, and if you want to make the argument for John Cena, then, if you want to make the same argument for John Cena, then you can make the same argument for John Cena if you want to. But I can still give you matches where John Cena is good enough with other people who are not legends. Well, is Christian your example for a leg, for a wrestler for that John Cena? Like, cause like, no, that, a, was, that was more. Right, so, are you canceling out Christian being a legend? Because like, Christian is kind of a legend. 
about right. He's not Summer Ray at all. This is fucking Christian. I'm not saying Chris is not a legend, but I'm saying like I'm saying he's not Summer Ray. <laughs> <laughs> but Chris, okay, is Christian the goat? He's a, a legend in the goat two different things. What is Look, he? Okay, all right. I feel like Christian, Batista had Christian's a, not Batista. a legend, legend, but casual fans. I think that's what Joe's point is. You know, you know who okay. the picture is. You Bro. know who Triple H is. You know who they are. You don't know Christian like that. A lot of people don't know Christian like that. If if Triple H shows up at AEW, people will go crazy. If Undertaker shows up in AEW, people will go crazy. Christian showed up. We were excited. We didn't go crazy. You don't. You can't. You can't give me five five star matches from Batista. You can't. I just can't tell you. What are you talking about? Name name me the five five star yeah, outside matches. of the legend. You said he outside. barely has. He barely has more than two four star matches. Look, man. Because five and star. Because you know, five star like all not, term. And he figured up AEW as if Tony Khan didn't try to sign Dave Batista. Are you crazy? What are you talking about here? He, not a, but Timmy's not a legend. He's not. He's not he a legend, man. I, look, man. I, I, there's no look. He's a legend yeah. through. He's he's a legend through association, like Joe and said. You, you brought Guardians of the all, Galaxy. Okay, so brought this all the way back around. <laughs> it started saying that Moose is the Black Dave Batista. You, whether you want to admit it or not, you proved me right, Bucko. Okay. He's not, bro. The argument was not about Dave. Dave, Dave, Dave Batista in his prime Dave. couldn't hang. Dave Batista in his prime couldn't hang with AEW, Kenny Omega, let alone New Japan. Moose actually went like twenty plus minutes with him. Moose, I Dave mean, Batista could not last twenty minutes with Kenny Omega. Two years ago. <laughs> only two years At no ago. point. Only two years ago, we wouldn't even be having this conversation because y'all would have been trying to desecrate Moose for blowing up in the ring for wrestling your precious Kenny Omega. Bro, Facts. do you know who Kenny Omega is, bro? Like, do you yes, like? Yes, I do. Okay, I don't right, bro. Look, that's what I'm saying. Like, like, but that's I what I'm saying. saying. I don't care. That's my Moose point. Moose would blow up point. two years that's ago. My point, bro. Moose but that's go and get in the gym and take care of himself and get himself to where he is now. We wouldn't be even having this conversation, bro. But you but can't you not tell you me. Can't, you me. can't show me the impact that Dave Batista has had on other wrestlers. He has no impact with nobody else. You can bro, tell me anything else. He has no impact with no other wrestler, bro. With no other wrestler. You the know, know Moose, one. and Moose took Dave's move set. That's the he end. took Bobby Lashley's move set because Lashley has a move set. Dave Batista has no move set. Lashley's too you. smooth, bro. Lashley, Lashley's move set is way too smooth for Moose. He does that. That that that's. <laughs> <laughs> way I too mean, smooth, bro. Bro, it's, it's, it's like a it's like a it's like a bounce to his spine buster. It's a way bro. he hits you with the clothesline. Ah, bro. It's, it's, Thank you, Will. Like, why, why, it's, it's, why, it's a snap to his power line. bomb. Like, ah, bro, like, ooh. y'all are really serious with me right now. Yo, no, really no, no, hit me out, hit me out, hit me out. I tell you what, I, tell you what, I, can, I can do this only like this. Before we, before you go, Will. Mm -hmm. You know other wrestling fans. Ask them if I'm lying. Ask them if I'm lying. I'll Ask do you one better. I'll do you, I'll do you one better. I'll post it on Twitter tonight. And, and I'll post it on Twitter tonight. And if motherfuckers say that shit, then I'll apologize next episode. Cause yeah. this is blasphemy. This is no, you gonna, this, this right here, you're gonna probably have to get in the DMs. Cause you, you know how it go on, on, in, on social media. Don't nobody really want to get a love like they're really supposed to get a love. Look, bro, look, listen I'm to me tell, right I'm here. I'm gonna tag you in this, I'm gonna, I'm gonna like look, that. Look, word it right. That's all I'm saying. This, 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 oh, so, this, this, I'm, I'm, I'm gonna edit it tonight. I'm editing it tonight, tonight. Okay. I'm editing it tonight. Hit up Park Wrestling. Hit up, hit up Dirty Heels. Hit up the other cats that, that support us and that we support. Okay, put them on the fucking group message. And we'll all have fucking chat. You sound man. fucking nothing right now. Let's do it. Even better. You sound crazy as shit. They you know, you know, do not sound crazy. His move it's set is from one David Batista. The diagram yeah. is not David Batista. It's Bobby Lashley. Are you serious? The spear is exactly the fucking same. The he fucking do it like Bobby. If he, if he was able to do it like Bobby, bro, he'd do it like Bobby. Bobby does a goddamn front flip when he hits you. Dave hit you and just Moose. dropped to his knees. So does Moose. Moose did the same thing. What are y'all watching, bro? Are we not watching the same thing? Tell me right now, okay? Are you motherfuckers colorblind? Can you not see? Tell me now. Tell me the truth. Is it? Is this? Is this in color right now? Well, it, it's a red <laughs> rose on your hat. You are hot. You are <laughs> yeah. hot. You are fucking hot. You, sir, I have no idea why you are defending Dave Batista in this manner. But this is bullshit. You know it. 
Dave Batista had five moves. Uh, the weak uh, ass shoulder tackle, the stupid ass clothesline, the dumb ass spine buster that wasn't shit, the pop, uh, the fucking, the, 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 one of the worst spheres, and the Batista mind where he, uh, uh, that shit was trash. You Move, forgot. Move he shaked the shit out the ropes. <laughs> so that when he power bomb he's strong. It's like when he puff your, it's like when you puff your shoe, the Reebok. So shut that up, power Will. bomb be like, Ooh. Shut, up. shut up, Will. Shut your mouth right hey, now. Go ahead, up, pump. You up? What's move? What's move? Moves. Spear, flatline. Mm -hmm. If you know what the flatliner is, it's the thing that Bobby Lashley does, which is why I'm so adamant about comparing to Bobby Lashley. The Dominator, which Bobby Lashley does, is the same thing. He also does. The uh the shoulder tackle, the diving shoulder tackle, which is mm -hmm. similar to John Cena, mm -hmm. not fucking Batista in the first place, a power bomb, which yes, is similar to Batista. But every person at 6'6, 275 does a power bomb. Oh, our, matter of fact, what's the guy's name? Uh, uh Enzo and Big Cass. Big Morrissey does the power bomb. He was in the triple threat match. With motherfucking Matt Cardona and him, okay? I thought you were gonna call him, gonna call him Mid Cardona. Mid Cardona. <laughs> Mid Cardona. Oh, yeah, keep pushing, but moose okay. and shit. Mid it Cardona. Now, let's, end this, let's end this episode because you royally it's pissed me off, sir. No, you no, angered no, me. No, I'm your best. A couple more minutes, buddy. And even if you want to go with this Bobby Lashley crap, why would he want to be the second coming of Bobby Lashley? Why wouldn't he just do more to make himself in more of an original? Because Bobby Lashley moves are awesome. He has an awesome move set. Not a weak ass like Dave Batista. What's wrong with you, Ken? If you're okay. making that comparison so hard, why would you want him to fight Roman and not Lashley? Ooh, what is this? What is this? What is this? That's a belt. Mm -hmm. He has to have a belt. First off, where he has to have a belt. He has to have a belt. Mm -hmm. He has to be a champion. Okay. Who say he not who say he not gonna be Brock? Who not gonna be Brock? Who said Bobby not gonna be Brock? We don't know that yet. We don't, we guys we gotta see the right look because the right on the wall look like he might not be it. Because the way they got this stupid ass way in, all this stupid shit, all these gimmicks and shit. I don't like, know. You got if you go by based on Tim's logic, which actually makes sense at times. A lot of times when they be booking people to look weak, they go over. Bobby, Bobby looks real weak. Brock is shitting on light. him, but is pissing Brock is pissing Bobby off so bad. Like he just wrecked the the, the um hurt business. Like all he's right. hurting people. The more Brock pisses him off, the more people Bobby been hurting. That's not Brock Lesnar. What does he get to Brock? I'll break it down for you like this. Now I will say, oh, go ahead. No, go ahead. No, I was going to say, I will say that if our three of our prediction, three of us picked AJ, you could go, that's a different route to go. You can go AJ going after Bobby because although me and Morphe went after Roman, the way they were building Roman up, it's going to, I mean, AJ's always that's super over. Yeah, it's going to take somebody to the point where it's like, they just dropped the ball with so many people, though. There's been so many people that have been over enough to get over Roman, but, like, would AJ be the one to dethrone him? I'm wondering when Roman's going to lose his title at this point. I'm really wondering. I don't want AJ Styles to fall into that category of dudes who deserve better that get pushed to face Roman and all that the push was was that they had the opportunity, and that's the right. push. If you're not mm -hmm. the guy that's gonna beat him and you need that extra push or attention, don't don't face the dude. Yeah. If you, nah. if, like just don't at this point. Because you 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 break him from Omos, let him win the rumble, and then lose that mania to Roman, you're back at square one by Monday. Let's yeah. just don't do that shit. Nah, if you're gonna have him go out, he should win it. Cause they really don't have too many they don't have too many people built up. If it's not AJ, it's going to have to be Drew because they don't got nobody else. Yeah. To and so basically what I saw was Big E supposed to be the favorite to win the Rumble. Mm -hmm. That's what I, that's why I was saying I let everybody pick their picks uh, for the men's Rumble. That's what I saw. I don't know if that's going to necessarily happen because, like I said, it was it two years ago when Drew won? I actually, I we were doing the podcast. Did I pick Drew? Yes, you did. Man. Okay. Yeah. Cause he was the third or fourth on their list. So I'm not, you can't always look at the betting favorites. So mm. I just said I, this year betting favorite don't make sense to me though. Cause why even take Tyler off Big E? Just to have him win the Rumble unless he goes after Roman. That would be weird. Yeah. That's That'd weird. be weird, right? Yeah, Cause he just did that two or three months ago for one. And for two, it's like, that's why you don't necessarily shouldn't be doing champion versus champion all the time. 
Because at least with Drew and Roman, it's been like a little bit over a year when they did it and nobody was there. You know, there were no fans there. And the way that match ended, it set up for, you know, a, a rematch. To me, that was kind of definitive of how Big E lost. Like, do I really need to see a rematch? Hey. Like, Drew got speared through a barricade, <laughs> came back in the ring, speared again. Still kicked out, and then like I forgot. I think Jay, I think Jay interfered, and that's how he went over. But um, yeah. All right, well, real quick, I never got to say my women's picks. Oh, go I'll go for it because you got. I wasn't that damn high. Uh, <laughs> oh, you but, was, big fella. You you made Okada. And um, who else you said? You you said Okada versus who? Okada and Roman Reigns, yeah. Right, and we were doing uh, 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 back. Taker. Taker. We're doing oh. Taker's potential. <laughs> I didn't want to say nothing. I did say his opponent. No, you said, you said, you Okada, said Okada and <laughs> Okada. Now you said Okada and Roman. You went straight to the I, I said Taker should fight. Damn, who did I say he should fight? You, you didn't say Carter nobody, I don't think. You didn't say no take, take a pick. You, you made a joke saying Gunther should chop him in the dust. <laughs> I said a pick for Taker. When we go back, y'all going to see I said it. Oh, no, you going to see it. I'm going to see, see it first. And I'm telling oh. you now, I got a photographic memory. You didn't say it. <laughs> you didn't say it. Tim, Damn. Uh, Tim, what's your exact... Wait, 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 wait. Before you say one of it. What's your exact statement about Moose? Man, I said man. Moose is the black... I knew you was over there typing that book up. Yeah, yeah. I said I Moose is the black Batista. I, I stand on that. My only, right, ahead, my only retort, like I said, my only retort to that, Dave Batista ain't no point in his career gonna have no 20 minute match with Kenny Omega. I that's did all, say that's an all answer say. for the Undertaker. I did say an answer for the Undertaker, because I said he should fight the Tribal Chief on the Reigns, and they were gonna push it as God Mode versus the Devil. I definitely said it. Oh, yeah. Nah, he, he did. He did. It got kind of heated, man. It's a, okay. We gotta get the, this. How you get the people? <laughs> we do this for the people. Yeah. I need to get some tea to soothe my soul now. For y'all. Oh, oh, women, women picks. So women picks. So we can. We women's can picks. So I would, I would think that my potential pick would be like I just got a feeling they might try to do a um back to back with Bianca Belair. I know they want to like add stuff to her and keep her in the main event. No matter what direction they go, whether she wins or lose or the next main event she gets or whatever, but I got a feeling they might want to do a repeat with her. I can't think of nobody else that they would offhand except for my dark horse pick, Beth Phoenix. Mm. I like that. Okay. They're pushing. They pushing legends in the match. They they gave Lita mic time and pushing for a fake potential feud with her and Charlotte. What if she I has say a, a fake twist of fate? Aha! <laughs> uh-huh. You know, like, uh-huh. <laughs> like they, they 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 bet they, they best do her thing in her match with her husband and the Miz and Maurice, and then she comes to win the Rumble. You know, Beth had like a decent amount of time and work put in for NXT. Uh, you give her one more good run. In a main event match, which she never had with the way women's wrestling is going, let her fight Charlotte or, um, or, ooh, damn, Charlotte or I think Becky I'm going to go with that if, if that's what yeah. I, I, you know what? I, I'm keeping, see, the women I flip flop. I'm keeping my actual pick, my dark horse pick. Screw it. I'm changing it. Yo, Shirai. Mm. I forgot she even wrestled. <laughs> That's fucked yeah. up. I man. heard Ronda and I and I forgot I picked Bailey a few weeks ago. Yeah. That's a good pick. To, that, that's a good pick. I love pick, to stick though. with that. Yeah, that's a great pick, actually. I love to stick with that. It's just only reason I don't I don't know how fast. I know she's in a uh she's rehabbing it. Mm-hmm. But that with the ACL and now with everybody jumping chip and stuff, every day you might want to be like super precautious with certain people. Mm-hmm. I think I think I think we're all gonna find out Saturday when we're together watching Royal Rumble, and we might do a live on Instagram when the Royal Rumble is on. Yeah, let's totally do a live. Yes. I'm just I'm just glad Joe finally gets his shirt from 2020. <laughs> well, it's it's been a year, bro. I'm sorry, it's been fucking a year. Hey, uh, thank you guys for watching another episode of the Hot Take Wrestling Podcast. 
where I, again, lost my cool because somebody said something blasphemous. I apologize. I will try to do better the next episode. Um, make sure you follow us on Instagram at uh, Hot Take Wrestling. Um, and then also follow us on Twitter at Wrestling Take. Uh, this will obviously be available tomorrow with the video and audio and everything else. Um, please, 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 please follow all my individual brothers if you guys have any questions or anything else. Interviews are coming up. Lives are coming up for Royal Rumble. All the great things are coming up, man. Uh, again, I just want to uh, end this episode by saying none of the uh, opinions or thoughts by Logan the Machine are done by the Hot Take Wrestling Podcast in any shape, fashion, or form whatsoever. I thought, I thought, ironically, uh, we should have had Will sign off at that episode to say by the bell. Remember when, when, when they were trying to get people not to smoke pot? Right. There's no hope with dope. There's no hope with dope. <laughs> and then we'll just. Right. We should have Will say that, but then like be sarcastic about it and like blow smoke into the camera. We the ones. ones. <laughs> I'll do that next episode. Don't play the ones. Matter of fact, that's how you, you should start ending your hot takes like that. <laughs> no hope with gotcha. no. <laughs> Bullshit. <laughs> All right. Uh, Ideas. Logan, take us out. We the ones. And we want the smoke. Oh, not a good idea. Thanks for listening to the Hot Take Wrestling Podcast. The Hot Take Wrestling Podcast is brought to you by the NMG Network, a division of NMG Enterprises, LLC. Everyone brings in the impact. The really corporate will shoot me back.